Hi everyone and welcome to Cooking with Cricket. Today I'm bringing you along just to show you how I make my homemade chili. This is a uh, upgraded version of the chili I have on here already which is about two or three years ago. I've kind of redone how I do everything and we like this version better. So this is just how I make it. So I just thought I'd bring you along. So I'm starting out with a little over a pound of ground beef. Uh, when I make chili, I'm going to make enough to do a couple of nights. Or we'll eat it tonight and I'll put it in the freezer and we'll have it again another night. So if I'm going to make chili, I'm going to make chili. <laughs> so uh, sometimes I'll put some of that um, mild sausage and chop it up in here or whatever. Meat's gotten so terribly expensive, but anyway in my large pot I have my ground beef now I like to cook my ground beef slow and chop it up real 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 fine uh, this is just us this is how we like it so right now I'm gonna put my heat on medium low and to chop it up I use my potato masher I already have one I gotta go buy nothing else and it works great so as soon as this starts to heat up, and I will stand here and just keep chopping and stirring and chopping and stirring and chopping and stirring. And then I'll bring you back. Alright, I'm not even going to let that start to cook on the bottom. Like I say, it's on very medium-low heat. So I'm just going to start mashing it. And it's going to be hard for a little while to do this. Because the meat's still real cold. So, but I'll just keep doing this. And mixing it and doing it and mixing it. And um, I'll bring you back in about 10 minutes to show you what it looks like. Okay, I said I'd come back in about 10 minutes. Actually, it's been about 3 minutes. Now it's starting to it's starting to warm through. So it's starting to mash up a little bit better. And before anybody comments and saying, Eee, why are you doing your ground beef like that? Or, Eee, that takes too long. You do your ground beef how you like it. I do my ground beef how I like it. I don't really like ground beef at all. Um, but I can eat it better in the texture I'm going to show you when I get it that way than just big old honks of it. So, <laughs> I'll bring you back. But see, now that it's starting to cook what's on there, now I'm really just stirring and mashing. And that's how I do it here. <laughs> okay, um, now it's starting to cook. I'll just stir it up. And I keep mashing it. And then sometimes I'll take my spoon and scrape it real good. But it's almost broken up like I like it. So I'm going to let this get almost done. I will turn it up in just a minute so to see if I need to drain it. Let all the grease get out. If it's even going to have any. But I just wanted to show you and I'm still on medium low. And it's been about 10 minutes. If that long. So, in my food processor, I took one about medium-sized onion and one very large jalapeno that we still have growing out in the garden. I put it in my food processor. That's how I like it to mix it up fine. I thought I had some fresh garlic. I don't. If I did, I'd put a couple of cloves in there and let that chop up in the food processor. But it'd be all right. I got some adobo and garlic anyway. So, I will bring you back once this gets done. When I turn my heat up to medium, this really doesn't have any grease in there. And what tiny bit it might have is not worth me dirtying up a dish to drain it in. So, I'm going to put my onion and jalapeno. Sometimes if I have green bell pepper, I'll chop it up and put it in there. Or like I say, I'll add my garlic. I'll add that. I'm gonna give that a stir and I'll let this cook for about two or three minutes. And then I'm going to add this right here. And you can use any brand. I'm just gonna get the Kroger brand because it works fine for me. Um, you can get regular, medium, mild, whatever. I just get the original. Uh, I do want it to have just a little bit of a spice, but not where I can't eat it because my stomach can't handle that. But I have two packs of this. 
and I'll be adding that in just a second. Alright, now I'm going to add my two packs of my chili seasoning and stir that up real good. Mix that in really well. It don't have to be in really well. So I'm going to add one um, 14 ounce can of just beef broth. Add that in there. And then to give it more flavor, I like this um, better than bouillon. And I'm just going to use about a teaspoon of it. Actually, what's about in this jar is about a teaspoon. And I'm going to mix that in. Alright, let me get that mixed in and then I'll bring you back. Alrighty, now this may be out of order. Like I say, this is how I do it. But now I'm going to season it up before I really feel this chili pot full so I get we get this at our local um, barbecue house this is so good but a little goes a long way and so I'm just gonna add just a squirt in there and I'm telling you that much is it's really gonna be enough and I mix that in and then of course my what's this here sauce I don't measure. <laughs> I just plop it in there. And then I will have my son, after it cooks a little bit, come and taste test it. But I would say probably about a tablespoon. Because it comes out slow. I don't know if you can see that. So it looks like I'm putting a lot, but I'm really not. And then I can see on the bottle how much I've used. Alright, let me mix that up. Now, I'm not going to add a lot of my salt. I use kosher salt because that beef broth had salt. That beef concentrate had salt. You know, so I'm just going to put maybe a teaspoon in there for now. Just because we can always taste it and add more, but you can't take away. And same thing with my black pepper. I'm just going to add some in. And of course, you know I gotta use my uh, dehydrated parsley. So about a tablespoon of that. And then my adobo, which is garlic and stuff. So put a good bit of that in there. And then just because I like paprika, I'm gonna shake a little bit of paprika in there. Like I say, I've been cooking this so long, I about know how much to add. And I know I added a lot of chili seasonings with those two packs, but I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit more chili powder. And that's about a teaspoon. Throw those spices off that spoon. And now I have a big 28-ounce can of crushed peeled tomatoes. Now... If I couldn't find these and just had the petite dice, they would have been in my food processor too. Just saying. But I like the crushed because I'm not picking up a big old hunk of tomato like those petite dice. I'm going to pour that in there. And those uh, seasoning mixes, I kind of like it because... I want my chili to be not real thick, but not just like watery thin either. So it kind of thickens it up just a little bit. And um, I'm going to add just one 29 ounce can of tomato sauce. And then I will fill this can up with water and add that. So I'll bring you back. Okay, here's my tomato sauce. And I'll just fill this can up with water and add that. Now, I might need another can of liquid, but I'll see in just a minute if I do. Because I'm going to let this 
I'm gonna let this simmer for about an hour and it will simmer down a lot and yes I'm gonna add just one more can fill this can up with water I won't be using any more tomato sauce or anything all right if you notice I have not added beans uh, me and Ricky like beans in our chili my kids do not uh, so when I get it to this point I'm gonna let it come up to the bowl because I feel like it needs to boil for a few minutes to let all the onion and peppers and all that get together and get in there real good and then we'll taste it and I'll check it for seasoning and then I'll bring you back when we get to that point all right my son and I tasted it it just needed a little bit more salt and of that barbecue house sauce I got that mustard vinegary added just a little bit more to it so now what I'm gonna do is take out some without beans cook it and then what I have left in here I have a couple of cans of pinto beans you can use any bean that you like I'm gonna add a couple of cans of pinto beans uh, but I am gonna uh, drain them and rinse them and then I'm gonna add it and I'm gonna cut it down to low let it barely simmer right 30 minutes to an hour and I'll keep checking on it stirring it and stuff and then I'll bring you back when it's ready when we're ready to give it a try all right my chili is done sometimes I put cheese on it uh, some raw onion would be good on there but tonight I just want it with my little mini crackers so now let me try a bite it's delicious so this is just my updated version of my chili it does have a little bit of a spice kick and I can eat it like that just not a lot um, if Ricky or Alex wants theirs more spicier they can add hot sauce to it but um, I like this version better than my other version so this is way I cook it now <laughs> So anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, comment, because I love hearing from you. Until my next video, I hope you enjoy, and I want to give a shout out to my son, Alex, who does the thumbnails now. He uploads, he edits, and everything for me. It's a big help with everything we got going on right now. <laughs> so bye, y'all.